Hi everyone, back for week three. Uh, this week I thought I would talk about um, using tissue paper and napkins, um, which is something that I like. To, which is something that I like to do sometimes. And there's an, a lot of decorative napkins around the place, and there's two that I have here, which are really pretty, and they're quite cheap. Uh, I get twenty or so for two dollars. Uh, so look around and see what you can come up with. They do need to be uh, two or three ply. And these are three, I think. We'll find out when I start to separate them. So what you need to do is open them out and either tear or cut. I'm going to tear. And tearing has the advantage of revealing one of the layers underneath fairly easily and that seems to be the top layer there yes then there is a second layer which you may be able to see on your screen there has uh, also does have an imprint of some of the butterflies there which is rather nice so I think I might actually like to use that too I may not, but I might. So by tearing it again, oh, this is happening really easily. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm there going, mm, maybe it's only two layers. But in this case, easy breezy. So we've got those two layers now. And I don't actually even throw this layer out because you can actually put this through your printer. Um, quite successfully and um, I'll show you that another time but uh, that opens up a whole new range of possibilities for you to use uh, tissue paper if you can print your own images on it. Okay I'm going to put this away for now. Okay so we have these layers now and I also have a piece of paper here which is just a uh, very light paper and I did a whole lot of scribbling on it um, writing out some stuff and I've then covered it with some gesso and with some spray and some paint and scribbled in that uh, in the wet gesso and they're all techniques that are fairly common to art journaling and we will cover them um, as we go through the year but this is how I've prepared this sheet or rather found this sheet and thought I might like to do a little bit more on it and use it as a background okay so I'm not really sure how much of this I want to use so I'm going to tear out some of it and just see where we go Pretty sure I want to use the little bugs here. And the reason that I like to tear is because it gives a more uneven edge, and I find that personally that is easier. To blend into the paper than a, a straight cut edge. I find that a little harder to um, cover up and disguise than I do a frayed edge. So I might start with this and we need gel medium. I have um, so simply take your gel medium and put it onto the back of your tissue paper. You can use uh, tissue paper that you um, normally use for gift wrapping um, that comes in colours. It's sometimes printed, that's fine too. Any tissue paper really. So once you have that, it becomes fairly fragile so you do have to be a little careful in handling it. 
put it down onto your paper and I'd probably prefer it to be a little bit straighter, maybe like that. And then start stroking it from the centre out and I still have gel medium on my brush and that's what is smoothing it out and taking out the wrinkles. You do need to do it fairly gently because it is fragile and it can um, put holes in it and there is one there and one there. I don't worry too much about that because I'm going to do work on top of it anyway. I'm thinking maybe I might want this piece here. I can put the gel medium directly down onto the paper as well. That's another way of doing it. Just making sure I'm going to cover all the space where I'm putting it down. And then do the same thing, working from that centre. Um, if you're going to use anything to uh, press this down with I suggest that you use a brayer, a roller um, rather than a credit card because a credit card is going to scratch it uh, off the surface. So it starts to kind of blend in with the, with the background a little bit and this is even more obvious if you use something that has a white or a um, a lighter background such as this. We may even use a little bit of this maybe. And you'll see that because this has a light background it really melts into the background and you can barely see that it is something that you've stuck on. It, it just goes completely into that background and also allows the some of the background colour to show through which it's a pretty cool effect really. So liking that, I think I actually might like some more of that design um, up here somewhere maybe. Okay so what I want to do now is add a bit of colour to kind of integrate these a little bit and I'm going to use this um, watercolour palette that I have here and I think I'll start with this colour here which is reasonably similar to what I've got here and just I'll add a little bit of the darker colour there as well and just paint a bit around there okay now I'm going to take a pen. This one is actually um, a, a fabric pen, a Zig fabric pen. Um, and I find that it writes over most things and it's got a scrolly tip and a fine tip, which is really nice. So that's a good thing to use. And I'm just going to outline this leaf here and this one. and create some that actually aren't there. And come down. This is just doodling. Okay, so here we are back again with then that um, butterfly is being covered up with gesso now. And I'm going to put some colour back over it. Gesso does resist watercolour a little bit. So you may have to persist to extend my branch here down. I think I want it to kind of curl into this area here. And then loop around perhaps.
so here is my finished page and I have added some journaling along here um, I've added some words uh, I've done a little bit more doodling I've moved a bit of colour around um, because I didn't want my journaling to be really obvious I did wash over some dilute uh, gesso over that area um, I made the edges, I tore the edges I, I really like that look um, and darkened them which gives it a kind of distressed look I also added um, one of those little uh, dragonflies that were on the paper uh, on that paper at the beginning that were just the second layer that was I can't see it now but the uh, second layer that was just a very faint image so I uh, put that onto this spot here and then I went over it with my pen to just make it a little bit more obvious and so my page is now finished and it is now actually quite substantial. Uh, it started out as very thin paper and because I've added these elements and gel medium and gesso and tissue paper and napkins, it is actually now quite substantial and I would be quite happy to just punch some holes and put that into a book or I could um, actually stick it on a page in a book and I tend to work that way I, I like to produce single pages and then pop them into a book later um, however if you want to work through a book that is fine and of course that will work too all you need to do is get some kind of background down before you start uh, and then just go with whatever colors you have in your napkins and doodle and play and enjoy so I hope that you will have a go at this and start looking around for some napkins um, if you have friends that do mixed media and art journaling you might like to suggest to them that you um, exchange napkins because as I said in the beginning you do get quite a lot in one packet and you're not going to want all of them yourself so a napkin swap you know is a is a great idea I think so have fun and have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye.